Hello, Les from Thailand and today's video is going to be about life after divorce. Uh, I'm going to go through my divorces that I had and life after divorce or what can life can be following divorce. It's a tough story, all my three divorces, but I'm going to go through it. I don't want anybody to feel pity for me or sorry for me or whatever. I'm just talking to those people who are going to go through divorce or are going through divorce and that life doesn't end following divorce. So don't worry, there is a happy ending at the end of it. So I'm going to give me car a wash. So, di divorce. I've been divorced three times and I've been married four times. So being divorced doesn't put me off getting married again for the fourth time. So I'm going to go through my three divorces and starts off with wife number one. The reason for getting divorced was that I found out after five years my child wasn't my child. It was fathered by her ex-husband or her ex yeah, her ex-husband. So she was still seeing him while she was seeing me and I didn't know that. And then she sort of thought that I was a better prospect than her ex-husband. So she left him and moved in with me, unbeknown to me, but I found all this out later on. So it came as quite a shock to me that I found out that my child wasn't mine. And this is before DNA, this is before DNA take, take over the, the payments of the, the child. If, if you weren't the biological father of the child, then you didn't have to pay maintenance. So once I found out he wasn't my child, I took her to court, she vehemently denied that I wasn't the father, I mean I certainly was, but one reason or another we found out that it didn't matter. And when we went to court the solicitor said to me, you're going to end up paying. And I said, why should I end up paying? He isn't my child. And he said, because that's the way it is, you're going to end up paying. So I employed the solicitor to fight for me sort of knowing that I was going to end up paying anyway but I wanted to to try and prove my point that why should I pay for a child that isn't mine I've been duped into paying for a child that isn't mine and sure enough we got to the end court date and again solicitors I hate solicitors absolutely detest solicitors and barristers they're just you are the cash cow to them and they'll milk you for everything that you can get so that's one advice of Beware of solicitors, they will take as much money off you as they can. So, I, um, at the end of the hearing, I remember the judge said to me, and I'll never forget her words, and this is going back a lot of years. And she said to me, because you knowingly or unknowingly looked after this child for more than three years, you are deemed to be responsible for that child, and you will pay the maintenance, Mr. Pearson, that I suggest you will pay. And taken into my work account, it was a, a lot of money that I had to pay, and I paid for this child for 10 years. And she never ever told them that I wasn't the father. Um, he was five years old when, when uh, we separated, and because it was a obviously a bad court hearing and things like that. I sort of had nothing to do with him and I walked away from his mother and I walked away from Martin. Although I did love him as my son, um, it was hard to, to cope with being duped into pain for somebody that wasn't yours. So I sort of stopped the contact with him. Uh, I'd already stopped for two years well, so the divorce went on anyway. So it was difficult to do. I was plenty of tears and woe is me and all of that lot so so that was divorce number one and just a little bit from that 25 years later he contacted me through facebook and asked me why his father abandoned him and i said well what did your mum tell you and her mother told him that i was the father so unfortunately a lot of tears and a lot of talking with him over Facebook 
I told him I actually wasn't the father, but I told him who was his father. And I thought how cruel that his mother, for all of these years, told him that I was the father and I abandoned him, walked away from him, when she never told him the truth as to the reasons why. So that was that one. And then divorce number two. Been married for a, a few years, we had two kids. I worked three or four jobs, seven days a week, so she didn't have to work after we had the two kids. Unfortunately, her sister died of cancer and I looked after the kids for the six months that my wife was up in Scotland taking care of her or being with her sister for her last moments. So for six months, I took care of the kids and, and paid all the bills and did everything else. And then when she came back home, she decided, I want a divorce. I don't want to be with you anymore. And I said, What's, why has all this not come about? She said, I don't like you know, how you work. I don't like you know, always working and you never have time for us. I said, well, I'm always working because you don't want to work. I said, I'm working to pay all the bills. We've got two kids and everything else. And I offered to stop work. I'll just work as a firefighter. And I said, but you've got to go back to work as well. No, she didn't want that. She didn't want to go back to work. She was happy being with the kids. So the divorce started. And you can imagine what the divorce is like. It isn't good. And the fact that she had the two kids. When I met my wife, she had a suitcase full of clothes. And that was it. And then when we got divorced, we had three houses. A good lifestyle, good income coming in. Okay, we had a lot of debts as well. But she wanted to take advantage of all that lot. And for me to pay a big maintenance, because of the money I was earning, she didn't want to work anymore. So by getting divorced, she, was, she thought she was going to get a, a big lump sum off me. And I looked at the bigger picture. I was eight years away from being retired from the fire brigade so because we had two kids i knew i was going to lose everything so i looked at the big picture and i thought okay if i come out with my pension i'll be happy at that and that's what i did uh give her the house and i took all of her debts because she was going to end up looking after my kids anyway and i didn't want her to struggle and i remember the day we finished court uh, oh, I've done another video, watch this video, I've lost it all, or did I? So at, at that court date, she said to me, I thought you had a good solicitor until I got everything. And I said to her, you might have won the battle, but you haven't won the war. So the moral of this story is, is that I thought I'd lost everything. But I still had my kids, I still had the contact with my kids. And then I thought, okay, let's get on with divorce. And I said to my wife, let's not fall out over this. That's because at the end of the day, I said, the divorce is over and done with now. I don't mind paying you the maintenance that I'm paying. I said, we're always going to be part of each other's lives because of the kids. And she wasn't very happy at that. And then some nine months after the divorce, I met this girl and I felt a lot about her, so I introduced my kids to her. This is when my life really, really changed and divorce just goes on. The losses that you can get through divorce just goes on. And what happened is that I took my kids out and my kids clicked that this was my new girlfriend. And she was good fun to be with. And um, my eldest daughter went running into the house saying, Mam, Mam, we've just met Dad's new girlfriend. She's wonderful, she's great, we've had a fantastic time. And I got that scowl look off my ex-wife. How dare I introduce my kids to a girl that's better than the mum. So then that's when it all started. She stopped me from seeing my kids and 
still recording. And what happened is the weekend, she said, no, you can't see your kids, we're busy. Following weekend, come see me. No, 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 I'm busy. We're going out somewhere. So then she stopped me from seeing my kids for nine months. I had to go through the court system to see my own kids. So you can imagine nine months and my kids then were nine and seven. So the damage was done. All the bad mouthing started, didn't care. And no matter what I tried to do, I couldn't see my kids. So I had to go through the court system to do that. I didn't want my kids being upset by me knocking on the door and creating a nuisance. So I went through the justice system, which sucked. Nine months it took. So of course, when we eventually seen my kids that the bond had gone, or the bond had certainly weakened, and then continuously after that, all she did was just badmouth me. For instance, following up every Mother's Day, I used to give the kids money so they could buy the mum a present, same with birthdays, I'd give them money so they could go and buy presents for the mum. But when it came to Father's Day and Dad's birthday, kids, oh, sorry Dad, sorry Dad, Mum wouldn't give us any money to buy you anything. So after three years of doing this, I stopped the money for Mother's Day and birthdays. And my kid says, Mum's going to be really upset because we can't buy her anything, Dad. And I said, well, do you think Dad's upset because you don't buy me anything for Father's Day or, or Dad's birthday? Oh, we didn't think of that, was the answer. So then the kids got older and older. And when my kids, my eldest daughter got the 15 year old troublesome teenager she was and then the, it was dad's fault for everything dad's fault for why mum has no money dad's fault because mum is struggling dad's fault because mum can't take the kids anywhere always dad's fault never mum's fault so dealing with that issue we went to took the kids to america i took the kids on holiday bought them laptop computers, bought them everything to make up because I only seen them for weekends. But of course, all the times the hate was being spread by the mum. And eventually when they got to leaving college and university, the damage was already done. And no matter what I did and said was a pack of lies according to them. And many people said to me, just wait until you get, kids get all the layers and then you'll be able to speak to them and tell them what's going on. But of course, travelling around the world, when I retired, didn't help because then I lost contact with the kids totally. And then it was like, the mum had a great, I oh, see your dad's abandoned you, he doesn't, he doesn't even want to see you for weekends now. So the hate just went on and on and on from the mother. And then... The times that I did come back to England, arranging, I was back to England for six weeks and said to my kids, come on, I'll take it out for something to eat. Oh no, we're busy, Dad. I said, well, I'm only home for six weeks. Surely you can make it for an hour or two. Oh, we'll see what we can do. And I was into four weeks of my six week return to England and I spent two hours with them. And all I did constantly for the two hours was on the phone. So I asked them to put the phone down, put the phone away and says, you know, come on, we, we've only got two hours together, you know, is this, is your friends more important? And they said, well, we thought we'll give you a chance, Dad. And you're telling us to put our phones away, so you just like what Mum said, you're selfish. And I said, okay. So I was very angry then, but I didn't say nothing, I never ever bad mouth their mother ever, ever bad mouth, never. And uh, I was biting my tongue to say something, but no. And then on my second return to England, they never even bothered to come to see us, even though I said to them like, you know, I'm in the red car area, can you, can we meet up? No, we can't. And then my eldest daughter came to Thailand for two weeks holiday and she was in Koh Samui and unbeknown to me she was in Koh Samui the same two weeks that I was there and she didn't even let me know and I found it on Facebook after she returned that she'd been to Koh Samui 
So divorce, you can lose a lot more than financial re finance. I lost contact with my kids, but the doors always open. And one day, I hope they come and see me and ask what it was all about. She, my eldest daughter now is 30, and my younger daughter is 28. So they'll have their own lives to, to live and hopefully they realise that mum's bad mouth in all the, the life and all the times and I'm not as bad as what they think. Who knows? But I get on with my life here in Thailand. I have a good life. I mean, look at where I live. Beautiful. And my third divorce, that's the simplest. Married to a Chinese girl who sort of I shouldn't have got married really, I had a good feeling that it wasn't going to work but I thought myself a little bit of doubt of that because I've been divorced twice I had doubts of everything but stupid really, I should have listened to my gut feeling so we travelled around the world for two years spent a lot of money travelling and then she said I want to go back to England I don't want to travel around the world anymore I said, well, we can live anywhere in the world and you want to go back to Redcar in England? She said, yes. She said, I want to go back to my same flat. I want my same life that I had before I met you. So I said, okay. So we agreed to, to part our ways and the divorce to a, a two-year separation. And then that would allow us to both just mutually divorce and consent, no blame. And then my ex-wife consulted a solicitor and the solicitor said if you start the divorce off it means he has to pay so she started the divorce off and because I wasn't living in England it proved more difficult than what she thought uh, her solicitor asked me to say I was habitually living in in England so the divorce could go ahead so I said to the solicitor, you want me to lie? You want me to lie to say that I'm living in England just so the divorce can happen? No. I said, let it carry on until it's term. Well, she said, you can't get divorced. You can't get divorced then. She said, because you're living out of the country, so she can't divorce you. I said, well, that's okay. We had a two year separation deal. I'll wait for the two years. And then after two years, we were legally separated for two years, so then I could apply for the divorce and it cost me £200. But I've got to say, if you're a man, getting divorced, you're screwed. But don't let that bother you, because this is my fourth marriage now, and I'm happy. I live in a beautiful country. I live a beautiful lifestyle. And there's going to be many people going through the divorce scene at the minute because of COVID and one thing and another. And all the stories about is that there's life after the divorce. And I hope that people look at this story and think, yes, I've been through a hard time financially wise, bankruptcy, losing four houses altogether, um, paying for kids that weren't mine. I've been through the bill, but I'm happy. So for those people who are going through divorce and think that their life is bad at the minute, there's life after the divorce. Look at the big picture where you want to be. Finances, don't worry about losing everything because you can live here so cheaply in Thailand. You can live a wonderful life in Thailand. You don't need a lot of money. So if you've got any questions or you want to know anything, I'll leave a link down below for my email address. Just write me anything that you want to know. Leave your comments down below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. So from Les, living the dream in Thailand. Until the next video, bye for now.